Praise the Lord, we are live. I love saying that. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. Thanks for everything today. Those of you watching, just join us. How you doing today? We're alive and well. Amen. Amen. Um, we'll be praising the Lord, lest the rocks cry out in our place. Praise God. I'll tell y'all, you know, there, there's a lot of a lot of pain to be had in this in this world, in this life. There's a lot of disappointment and uh, you know, letdowns and different things like that, but I'll tell you, this life's going to be over before you know it, you know, and um, I just want to encourage you guys to, just to hold on to God and to hold on to your faith, and the joy of the Lord is your strength, amen, and when you hold on to the Lord, you're going to be strengthened, that, that strength is going to be replenished in you, and um, you'll be able to do anything, and go through anything, and endure anything, amen, because God is your rock. So I want to encourage y'all to turn to the Lord and just trust in Him. You know, it's a simple, simple word, simple uh, phrase, trust in God. But that's the best thing we can do, just trust in God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you this evening that you are our peace. You're our comfort. You're our guidance, God. We thank you that you're our shepherd. We thank you, Lord, that you lead us and you comfort us with your, your rod and your staff. We thank you that you are good, Father. And there's nothing we could ever do to deserve your goodness. But we just simply step into that, step into that rest that Hebrews talks about. We enter in by faith. We believe in you. We believe in your son, Jesus. We believe in the Holy Spirit who was sent to dwell in us. Thank you, Lord. We believe, Father, and we just step into that verse now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, I am Pastor Kyle, the uh, English and Associate Pastor here at Vision Church of Lockhart. We're excited to have you join us this evening, and we're going to get to the Word. Amen? So we're in this uh, study on lessons from David, and boy, we've already learned quite a few lessons from him, but there's quite a few more for us to learn. Uh, from David, who was a man after God's own heart. Praise God. So, we are in lesson 8.2, and uh, we're going to kind of piggyback off of last week's teaching. So, let's let's uh, get over here, or let me get over here, at least I should say. Thank you, Lord. It's called a confident testimony. So, this is part two. We, did, we started... Um, this uh, teaching last Wednesday, Confident Testimony, you can catch that on our YouTube page or, you know, on Facebook. Uh, you can go to Vision Church of Lockhart, search that on YouTube, and you can find our, all our teachings. But, all right, let's go ahead and, and let's jump in here. So this is how you become a giant killer. You don't wait until big things like cancer are on your door. You start trusting God in the small things every day. You fight to keep your joy in peace, just like you were fighting a giant out there. You stand on principle on the small things, doing what's right, even when nobody else is watching. Amen. Right? God bless you being faithful in the small things. Right? David was on the backside of the desert. The grandstands weren't full. Nobody even knew what was going on. David may or may not have told other people what had happened. This certainly wasn't something that hit the front pages of the, of the local newspaper. David risked his life in a relatively insignificant manner in a way that he might never have received recognition and been acclaimed for. Yet he was just as faithful with, what, with that as if it were something big and important. And then you gotta ask yourself, you know, what is your motivation for why you do what you do? You know, are, are you seeking fame? Are you seeking glory? Are you seeking to be known? You know, I would say if you're seeking fame and glory, I would say that you're you're trying to steal from God. Because all the glory belongs to God. We, we must come to the conclusion, like Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. And then do we believe that or do we believe that our own strength has
has given us abilities. Our own strength has, has, has you know, enabled us to do certain things and acquire certain things. Brothers and sisters, we, we live and we breathe and we even die for the Lord. All the glory goes to Him. Because anything that we could ever do or acquire that is good, it's all by His grace. We cannot do anything apart from Him. Amen? Amen. And so just like David, you've got to ask yourself, what is my motivation for, for this? What is my motivation for doing an excellent job in something? What is my motivation for giving? What is my um, motivation for, for, for loving? Is it just for reward? Or is it because we love God? Amen. Many people want the great victory, but few are willing to pay the price of faithfulness. Everybody wants to kill a giant and hear the people sing their praise. But very few are willing to risk their lives on the back side of the desert when nobody's watching. Amen. I, I like to, you know, I, I like sports. If you don't like sports, that's okay. God will forgive you. No. <laughs> but I like sports, so I use sports analogies. But let's say you know football, for example, right? The NFL. Um, it's not football season right now. It's the off season. Um, but I can guarantee you, many of the NFL players, man, they're working their butts off right now. They're sweating. They're running. They're lifting. They're, you know, preparing mentally for the NFL season. And come, I uh, believe it's in August is when the NFL season starts. Come the NFL season, you're going to see who's been working during the off season. Because it's going to pay off. Amen? And so, uh, what we have to ask ourselves is, you know, what are we doing when nobody's watching? Right? Are we still being faithful? Because, let me tell you, everything done in the dark is going to come to light. And that includes both good and bad. If you're being lazy, if you're slacking off, if you're just, um, you know, putting your relationship with God on the back burner, let me tell you, when there's a trial or a storm that comes in your life, and it will come, you're going to be exposed. You're going to be exposed publicly. Amen? And so, but the, the opposite is true as well. If, if you're doing good things in the background, in the dark, where nobody's watching, nobody's noticing, but you're not doing it for them, amen, you're doing it because the grace of God has touched your life, I'll tell you, eventually, that's going to be that's going to come to light for everybody to see. So we've got to ask ourselves, what is our motive? Why are we doing what we're doing? And are we doing well if nobody's watching? If you aren't faithful in small things, you won't be rolled over much. If you haven't ever started trusting God for the ability to overcome headaches and colds, chances are you won't be able to stand when cancer comes your way. You need to learn to trust God in the everyday things. Do you control your temper? When somebody cuts you off in traffic, praise God. I'll tell you what, you know, we all have pet peeves, amen? So I'm just putting my, my fleshly pet peeve out there. Man, I hate it when people tell me, you know, when they're really close behind me, while I'm driving on the streets, I hate that more than anything. It just, you know, makes you want to just stop by the brakes, you know? And you're going to speed limit, but they, they don't care. They're just right <laughs> anyways. <laughs> I'll tell you, that just really gets on my nerves, but... Um, being honest with you guys, I, I haven't acted out in the <laughs> flesh, even though I feel like it. Amen. So, <laughs> so you got to ask yourself, uh, do you control your temper when somebody cuts you off in traffic or whatever is your pet peeve, whatever really gets under your skin? Amen. Are you showing self-control in the small moments? Are you showing self-control in your house? Hallelujah. With your spouse and your kids before you act like some holy man and woman out in public saying amen and hallelujah. No, how do you act at home? Because that's how God is judging you. Alright? So, or, or are you someone who gets upset, lays on the horn, and flashes them, or God forbid, makes an obscene sign? Alright? If you can't control yourself with something small like that, you'll never make it when the big things come. If you aren't faithfully working for your boss, you'll never become the boss. And listen, we have to get rid of the excuses. Okay? It doesn't matter if your boss is a good boss or not. They may be the worst boss in the world. But are you doing your works under them, or are you doing your works under the Lord? Amen? You can't control how your boss treats you or how he or she talks to you. You know, you can't control that. And maybe they're being biased against you. Maybe they're, they're treating others more favorably than they are you in the workplace. But you, 
We can't go for God and say, oh, God, I disobeyed you because this, this, and this. That's not going to stand with God. You know? God, I, I didn't do a good job because of this, this, and this. Maybe, maybe you're being tested right now. Maybe God, you know, sent you um, to that workplace or around that person. You know, they're, they're a sandpaper person, so to speak, where, where they're going to they're gonna refine you. <laughs> it's, and so, sometimes you're around people who, you know, you don't know why. They just get under your skin. You don't, you don't know what it is about them. They just, you just don't like them, Right? But you need to be faithful wherever you're at. And see, right now we have a, we, I, I see a lot of people doing this. You know, I don't want to say we have a generation guys up that is like this, but I think this is, you know, this is seen in every person, regardless of their age. But to where when things get tough, we just want to run. We just want to give up. What happened to being a strong Christian? What happened to getting your, receiving your strength from the Lord? Amen? What happened with, with enduring trials and enduring temptations. What happened in resistant temptation? Sorry. What happened to that? This is what God wants. God is, you know, God is tired. And listen, he loves you. You're his child. He loves you. But he is tired of his children being little wussies in this world, in this life. God's tired of it. He created us more. He, he sent his son and he gave us his Holy Spirit not so we could just lay down and give up when something gets hard. But he gave the Holy Spirit to us so we can overcome. The Bible says we overcome evil with good in Romans. Amen? Amen. So yes, there's going to be some stuff you're going to have to go through. Yes, it's going to be uncomfortable. Yes, you're going to have to fight, fight off some emotions, you know, that are telling you to quit and give up. And, and you feel depressed or you feel, you know, sad or whatever. You're going to have to overcome those emotions and you're going to have to push forward in faith. But listen, you're not doing it in your own strength. Your strength comes from the Lord. Amen? So if you're spending time in His Word and you're spending time with Him, you will be strong enough to overcome. You are more than a conqueror through Christ who loved you. Amen? Amen? But if you're not spending time with God's Word, if you're not spending time with God, listen, you're, you're not going to be very sensitive to the love of God that makes you more than a conqueror. And you're going to give up sooner than you should because you're, you're not um, able to respond to God's love. Because you're not receiving his love, because you're not spending time with him. And his love is where your security comes from, it's where your confidence comes from, it's where everything good comes from. And your relationship with God comes from the love of God. Hallelujah. So we need to buckle up and, you know, we need to be the men and women that God has called us to be. Amen. Amen. And I'm not saying your problems don't matter. I'm not saying your feelings don't matter. I'm not saying, you know, however you're being mistreated. I'm not saying that doesn't matter. But let's be strong. Let's be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Amen. Not our might. Because we will fade very quickly. The, the power of His might. Amen? Amen. I want to encourage you. Be strengthened. Hallelujah. Be encouraged. Stand up. Be a man. Be a woman of God. Thank you, Lord. All right. Let's keep on going here. Why should God give you a better car if you aren't taking care of the junkie you got now? Is your car so full of food and trash that it's hard for somebody else to get in? Why would the Lord uh, give you a new car and mess up? Amen. This is huge. Praise God. How many McDonald's drivers would I find in your car? I was going to open your car door right now. You got to take care of what you got. That's just what God is called us to do. He says, so come on, Andrew, you're shining out of that here. That, that, this isn't that important. It may not be to you, but that's probably the reason you haven't seen the mighty exploits yet. That very attitude may be why God hasn't used you in a bigger way. One of the common traits I've noticed from people when God is using, uh, whom God is using in a mighty way, is that they are faithful in a little as well as the big. Praise God. Amen. The celebrity pulled into town, you know, Matthew McConaughey pulled into town. Oh, man, everybody would be trolling, treat him super nice, you know, treat him like royalty, uh, and just, you know, how can I help you? How can I do this for you? Are, do you treat, will you treat Matthew McConaughey the same, per, the same way that you would a homeless person if you were talking to them? 
Or do you only show favor to those, you know, whom you like or who you think you can receive favors from? The Bible says the God kind of love is to love those who aren't going to love you back. Right? Loving your enemies. Amen. So, are we going to treat a high-profile person compared to a low-profile person? And in the eyes of God, there really is no high or low profile. But I'm talking about in the world's eyes. Amen? But we treat them the same. So, even if there are only five people in attendance, Andrew says here, they preach their heart out as if there were a thousand. They give everything they've got. They're people of integrity who are faithful in the little things. They aren't just faithful when big things are on the line and someone's watching. They do the right thing even if nobody is looking. Hallelujah. This is one of the reasons that, reasons that God used David to kill Goliath. He was faithful in small things. He was faithfully serving his father and protecting those sheep. Because of that, he had confidence to go in and fight the big battle. See, the that's, that's kind of how it is, right? Building that confidence. And that's why God won't give you, won't, won't allow you to have more responsibility than you can handle. Right? You'll just follow it up by it. But this is why God entrusts you with small responsibilities first. Because if we're responsible with, with the little things God gives us, man, that inspires confidence in you. Right? That inspires confidence in you. And so when something big comes along, you know you can handle it. You're confident you can handle it. The Lord told me that I was limiting him in some ways and that I need to grow. So we moved from a 15,000 square foot building, he says, into a 110,000 square foot building, which was a giant set of faith for me. I went from zero payments to where a monthly building payment alone was 25,000. Our utilities were up to 8,000 per month. So he's talking here about Harris Bible College, which is now currently located in Woodland Park, Colorado. Uh, then we outgrew that building and I started a 220,000 square foot building project for a new Carousel College campus that will cost 52 million. And we're doing it debt free. And that's not the end, there is more to come. We couldn't have done this all at once. I've been growing and trusting the Lord for decades. I definitely couldn't have done so without trusting God for the years and taking many incremental steps of faith. Uh, he says, I remember when Jay and I wrote out our first covenant. We were believing God for $300 per month. And this was a total income for both the ministry and us. And it allowed us to give $100 away each month. That's 33%. Right? I didn't get there overnight. It took me a while to grow up to that. When we moved to Manhattan Springs and began our ministry in the Colorado Springs area, we had to believe God for something like $700 per month to run the whole ministry back then. If I hadn't taken these in incremental steps through the years, there's no way that I could have believed God for $500,000 a month in 2003. That paid for my staff, building, equipment, radio, and television bills, etc. In 2013, we needed three million per month, and this will only increase in the future. I couldn't do this without being faithful and believing God for those smaller things. Amen. I remember Andrew told a story about um, just believing God for a new Bible. Because when he was a preacher, his Bible was literally so worn that he had parts missing from his Bible. <laughs> Trying to preach in a Bible that's not complete. <laughs> like, all right, let's turn here. Nope, that's not going to, that part must have fell out of my Bible somewhere along the way. So he believed that for a Bible. And now he owns multi million dollar land and property, um, you know, where Cures Bible College is. Is going on there at Woodland Park, and it's just amazing to see how God has blessed his life. But it starts with being faithful, amen. Let me tell you, if you're envious, if you're an envious person, like, oh, if only this had happened to me, if only I was in that position, if only this, if only that, if your if, you're if onlys are holding you back from God's best, your if onlys are keeping you poor, amen. We've got to start making excuses, and we've got to start being faithful in what is in our hand right now. Amen. And I don't hear, you know, there's nothing in my hand. No, there is something in your hand. There is something in your hand. God has never, ever created a human being in this earth that there wasn't anything in their hand. There is something in your hand. What are you going to do? This is a tremendous principle that you need to grab a hold of. You can't care for the future any better uh, than just by starting to be faithful today. Make the decision today that you are going to start believing God 
walking in joy, choosing to do the right thing, controlling your emotions, studying the word, and blessing other people. Choose to spend time with God, even if there's nothing pressing. Just do it to be a faithful servant. Faithfully serve other people. Serve your boss today. Do things with integrity and excellence. If you can serve a very time and prove yourself faithful, and when the dragon comes knocking on your door, you will have the ability to stand against him and overcome. And you won't question yourself. Amen? Right after David testified to Saul about killing the lion and the bear, he boldly declared, This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. In 1 Samuel 17, 37, it says, And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with you. This was nearly as big of a miracle as David killing Goliath. The terms of this contest had already been set forth. If Goliath had won, all the Israelites would become the Philistine servants. But if an Israelite won, all the Philistines would serve the Israelites. So when Saul said go, he was basically putting his entire kingdom, the whole nation of Israel, into the hands of this youth whom he had just, whom he had just moments before told, uh, you don't stand a chance. Right? So when you're confident, you're going to inspire confidence in others around you. And that's what God is calling us to do, is to be blessed to be a blessing. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Apparently, David's response to Saul's previous comments persuaded him otherwise. David spoke with such conviction about God being faithful when he had killed both the lion and the bear. He testified how the Lord had proven himself and come through for him again and again. There was so much authority and anointing in David's words that it literally caused the king to place his entire kingdom into his hands. That's a miracle, right? Imagine, imagine this, you know, we're, we're um, uh, this is maybe controversial, uh, you know, whatever. We're at, let's just say we're at war with China. <laughs> and there's this big, bad giant, right, in China that um, is, is threatening our nation. And President Donald Trump turns to a 16-year-old boy to save the whole country. And says to this 16 year old boy, if you don't win, all of the United States is, is, is under China. We're going to be their servants or whatnot. That's what it was like. That's crazy. I'd be like, President Donald Trump, you're crazy. <laughs> For sending a 16 year old kid to save our country. But that's what happened here. Amen? And God wants to use a smiley for his glory just like he did. Hallelujah. I think Saul recognized the anointing of God on David's life. Saul had experienced this in his early years. He became a new man and was able to win some impossible battles. I believe he was putting his faith not just in David, but also in the power of God that was on David's life. As you mature, people will respond to you, and as you recognize your covenant and believe God, as you stand up and seek for your faith, as you are faithful in the small things and grow, you will come to a place where what you say will command respect. When you have absolute faith and confidence in what you're saying, it'll inspire faith and confidence in those who hear you. When you know what you're talking about by both revelation and experience, not just theory, people will respond to you in ways they don't respond to others. When I minister God's word, he says, I speak from my heart. I'm not just rehearsing something that I've heard someone else say. I share with the Lord showing me on what subject it is. In fact, I've never heard anyone preach the things that we've discussed thus far in the book. These are things that I've lived. They're coming out of the lessons that God himself has personally taught me through the life of David. People can perceive it when you're ministering God's work in your heart. It rings true and gives you credibility in your sight. And that's when they'll respond to you. If God has called you to be a leader, you need to apply these truths and become totally convinced of what he's given you to share. People have come up to me and remarked, what you say is so convincing. It sounds so strong and overwhelming. Well, that's because I am convinced. <laughs> I believe the word I teach with all of my heart. When you believe what you speak with all of your heart, then the people who listen to you will be able to believe it with all of their heart, too. That's a great life, uh, great lesson from the life of David. Amen? Praise God. So, I'll tell you all, you know, God has big plans for all of us, and um, it's beyond you. You know, his plans, it's beyond your strength, it's beyond your ability, it's beyond your wisdom, and we just kind of trust God, and, and what that starts with, it, it, 
Don't be overwhelmed. Don't be scared. You know, because God's not going to give you more responsibility than what you can handle. But just be faithful with the responsibility He gives you. Be faithful where you're at. And you'll grow and you'll mature. And the things that look so big and bad and scary and ugly, they won't look like that anymore. Why? Because you've grown. Amen. Amen? When you were a little kid, you know, you were afraid of what was in the closet, right? At night, in the dark, you got scared. What's in the closet? Is there something in there? But when you grow up and you mature, you realize all that's in my closet is clothes. <laughs> Maybe too many clothes. Maybe you get rid of some clothes. But, you know, so your perspective changes as you grow and mature in the Lord. And, and, God, and, and God is calling us to face many great things in life, you know, and to overcome many big things in life. And you're not going to have the maturity to see things the way you should in order to defeat them. If you're not faithful with what you have now. Praise God. So be faithful in the now. And God will prepare you for more and bigger in the future. Be like David. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you for your faithfulness, God. Lord, we honor you this evening. Just by receiving your word. We honor you this evening, God, by humbling ourselves. And ask you to continue to teach us to be that humble servant like David. Yes. So we can grow. So we can not only overcome the giants for ourselves, but be a blessing to those around us. Just like David was a blessing to all the nation of Israel by defeating the life of God. We thank you, Lord, that you are faithful. And your faithfulness to us inspires us to be faithful to you and to those around us. Yes. Thank, you. thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, we thank you for the gifts that you've given us. Yes. You know, the gift of faithfulness, the gift of grace, the gift of love, the gift of faith. Thank you, God, I pray that we would not stand idly by while these gifts just wither away. Yes. I pray we would clutch the sword of the Spirit yes. that you've given us, God. I pray, Lord, that we would not be afraid or, or timid or intimidated of grabbing the sword, of putting on the armor, of stepping into the battle. Thank you, Father. Father God, I pray that your people would be encouraged, that confidence would be ignited on the inside of them yes, as they choose to step into the battle that you call them to right now. It may be, look like the smallest battle, Lord, but I pray that you have all the confidence in the world to step in there, yes. knowing that you are with them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, that's all we have for today. We're going to go ahead and take up our offering now. And I want to encourage you guys, if you're watching online, you can uh, get to bclockhart.com. You can go there, and uh, you'll see, you know, where the places to give there. Again, it's bclockhart.com. You can also mail in your checks and running orders to, um, to P.O. Box 1399, Lockhart, Texas, 78644. And you can make a check at Division Church of Lockhart. And uh, praise God, we're going to give to the Lord and just be faithful in small things. Amen? Amen. Praise God. You know, I've been a tither ever since I got saved. I got saved um, when I was uh, 13 years old. And, of course, that's not a legal working age. But, you know, um, you can still make money at 13 years old, <laughs> right? Doing, doing different things. And so I've been a tither ever, ever since I got saved. And I'll tell you, I, I'm locked for nothing. You know, God has always been locked for me. Um, God is faithful. Yes. And I just want to encourage you to trust in His faithfulness today. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God, we trust in you. And we thank you, Lord, that you will not let us down. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Your, your word says that love never fails. Thank you. Your word tells us God not to, to, to try you, to test you. Thank you, Father. If He will not pour out for us such a blessing, God. Lord, we Really, the, the, the true blessing is, is knowing you. Yes. And we just want to be faithful with the, the money we have in our hands, God. Because money's not our master. You're our master, Father. Yes. And so we, we're faithful in giving to you, God, because you provide for all our needs and you provide, um, you know, the, the talent, the ability uh, to be able to make money. So, God, we just thank you that you have the power to get wealth and we want to honor you with this love. We thank you, Lord, for being faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You are free here. Praise God.
And I'm going to go ahead and turn off this live stream now. But we love y'all. God bless y'all. And um, we hope you can either join us in person or join us uh, via live stream here on Facebook uh, this Sunday at